So it's very important to get these donations because they save lives. Um, so we have a lot of pets in the hospital that actually need blood transfusions and therefore a multitude of reasons, but um, one of the more common being um, something that they're bleeding from um, and they need blood, um, whole blood to replace it. Also, they have conditions that will actually destroy their blood, red blood cells, and so that's another reason we commonly give dogs blood transfusions. Um, and unfortunately, I wish I could say we don't use it a lot, but we do, like probably every single week there is a pet undergoing a blood transfusion, so these are truly life-saving donations that we're, we have here. So this is Callie. She is a one and a half year old bulldog and she presented through ER today because she has a pyometra. Basically what that is, is that means that she has an infected uterus. So right now I'm placing an IV catheter in her and uh, we're going to take some blood as well as get her on fluid. She'll be going to surgery today. Oh, Callie. Like her white cell count's like 85,000. Whoa. She's got bands and she's asthmatic oh and lactate four, so. Yeah, this is. It's a fire. You gotta get a picture of this uterus once he pulls it out of there. Okay, cute. It's gonna be massive. So it's not going to be the biggest I've seen because she's a tiny she's dog, a tiny but dog. compared to her, her body, weight. oh yeah, it's going to be it's going to be massive. It's like literally the entire abdomen. Callie is a one-year-old uh, female intact English bulldog who is now spayed, obviously. Uh, had uh, presented to guardian veterinary specialists for a uh, presumptive pyometra. Pyometra is a syndrome where there is a large accumulation of pus and bacteria within the uterus of a dog. Um, to give you some scope of what's going on, the uterus in a dog is uh, very similar to people, and this is a good little illustration of kind of its location. Um, it's in the abdominal cavity, and the uterus itself is actually tied into where the ovaries are, and the uterine body, and as well as near where it exits by the vulva. So if we talk about the anatomy, uh, basically what we're talking about is a situation where uh, pus and bacteria accumulate within this portion of the urogenital tract. To orientate everyone, these are the two ovaries right here. Here are the uterine horns that come down, and this is the uterine body exiting down by the, the vulva. This is actually the bladder, and these are the ureters. So that's the general orientation of this. With regard to pyometra, pyometra is actually a very interesting syndrome. Uh, it's one where it's a life-threatening surgical emergency. Uh, unfortunately, uh, what we see is the uterus itself is influenced by progesterone, which is emitted from the corpus luteum, uh, which is a portion of by the ovaries. Um, this excessive progesterone that's secreted from the corpus luteum causes the uterine tissue uh, to go into a different phase, become very thick, edematous, and it usually causes a situation where it's called cystic endometrial hyperplasia. Um, what happens is, is that it primes the inner lining of the uterus for a perfect culture plate for bacteria. One of the most common bacteria we see is E. coli. So since the vulva is so very close to the anus, there can be an ascending urinary tract infection from E. coli bacteria. When the E. coli bacteria ascend up into the uterus, it begins to grow rapidly. And that causes a syndrome where they get very sick. Um, a uterus which would, would be normally very small becomes very large and distended, friable, and able to even rupture. The bacteria grows and runs amok, and they become very sick from it. So what we do in surgery is we actually take them for an emergency procedure, where we remove the entire uterus and the ovaries very far down by the cervix, and remove everything in what's called an end block removal. So all of the disease is removed, and the entire abdominal cavity is flushed out to make sure there's no bacteria remaining. Once the uterus is removed, we actually then culture not only the urine, but the contents of the pyometra to confirm what exactly type of bacteria it is. Like I said, most of the time it's E. coli, but there can be some other bacteria that can cause this. The patient is then taken to ICU, we're covered with our excellent nurses and our ICU doctors, Dr. Ateca, the criticalist. We'll then put them on broad spectrum antibiotics, fluid therapy, and basically monitor them to make sure they don't become septic and they resuscitate them so they can become healthier and return home to their parents.